In today's video, we will go through the events of 2013 science fiction horror film, The Last Days on Mars. Spoilers ahead. You have been warned. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up, comment on what your favorite part was, and subscribe to our channel for more. The movie starts with some information about the space mission. A Martian research base called the Tantalus Base was established in the 2040s, and an eight-person crew has been stationed there for six months. They are only 19 hours from the completion of their research mission. A spacecraft named Aurora is inbound from Earth and will collect the team via a lander. Next, we see a rover carrying Vincent Campbell and Rebecca Lane arriving at the field to pick up scientist Kim Aldrich. Kim is busy collecting samples and makes the rover wait. She is frustrated that they haven't made any substantial discovery on Mars and are soon going back to Earth empty-handed. Back at the base, unlike Kim, scientist Marco Petrovic seems to be in good spirits. He tells Captain Charles Brunel that he needs to go on an extravehicular activity on the surface due to a malfunction. The gamma sensor on Site 9 isn't responding correctly due to a storm. Brunel hesitantly gives him permission but asks Petrovic to take crewmate Richard Harrington with him. He then tells them to return before dark and be present for the final briefing. Just as Campbell and Lane return with Kim to the Tantalus base, Harrington and Petrovic venture out on Rover 2. Tensions are running high at the Tantalus base. The cooling systems are down. Vince also learns that half of the CO2 scrubbers on Aurora are down, and the spacecraft is taking a strange approach trajectory. Kim is upset that she was forced to report back to the base so early while Petrovic, who she doesn't see eye to eye, gets to venture out. Kim, who is curious and competitive by nature, then starts going through Petrovic's workstation. Through his workstation, she and the rest of the team quickly learn that Petrovic found samples that were undergoing bacterial cell division, i.e., evidence pointing to life on Mars. They then realize that without revealing his discovery, he devised a ruse for a last extra vehicular activity on the surface. Brunel swiftly declares the site off-limits, but Petrovic reaches the site by then. Petrovic obtains the soil with the biological agent present. He is amazed and delighted with the discovery and asks Harrington to come out of the rover with a camera when the ground that Petrovic is standing on gives way, and he falls into a sinkhole. A panicking and horrified Harrington then issues a call for Mayday. Brunel and crewmate Dalby soon arrive at the site. Dalby insists on going down inside the sinkhole to rescue Petrovic, but Brunel denies her request. He isn't hopeful of Petrovic surviving the fall and not compromising his spacesuit. As he pronounces Petrovic dead, Dalby breaks down. Brunel then says that they need to get the lifting gear from the base to descend to the sinkhole and retrieve Petrovic's body. He then says that they also need to get approval from mission control. Dalby insists that she stays on site as she can't leave Petrovic alone in the sinkhole. Brunel and Harrington agree and leave Dalby on site and return back to the base to collect the lifting gear and approval from the mission control. Emotions are high at the base because of the accident. Kim insists on staying focused on the mission and breaking the news about the groundbreaking discovery, but the other crew members are astonished by Kim's indifference to losing one of their colleagues. The crew asks her to show some human decency when Kim, cold and candid by nature, retorts by indirectly accusing Harrington of getting Petrovic killed. Harrington loses it, and everyone tries to calm the situation down. Soon, the mission control grants the team permission to retrieve Petrovic's body. Brunel contacts Dalby at the site aboard Rover 2 and lets her know that they are heading back to her at the site when Dalby suddenly hears the sound of someone entering the rover. Brunel then loses contact with Dalby. A team arrives at the Fisher site to find Dalby missing. Brunel and Campbell venture into the sinkhole while Lane and crewmate Irwin inspect Rover 2 and find it empty. The bottom of the sinkhole isn't visible as it is releasing a lot of steam. The team wonders if Dalby fell in the sinkhole. Campbell ties himself to the rover through a safety rope and ventures into the sinkhole. After exploring the pit, Campbell reveals that Dalby and Petrovic are not in the sinkhole. He also reports seeing fungal organisms at the bottom of the pit when Irwin, who is inspecting the nearby area on foot, reports two pairs of footsteps heading towards the base. Brunel speculates they might be the footsteps of Dalby and Petrovic but is puzzled at them choosing to walk all the way to the base instead of taking the rover. Back at the base, Kim and Harrington prepare for two possible casualties. Suddenly, Petrovic appears outside the base. Harrington then swiftly opens the airlock, and Petrovic enters the base, immediately collapsing on the ground. A worried Harrington then helps Petrovic open his helmet when he is shocked to see a blackened, zombie-like Petrovic gasping for air. The exposure to the fungal organism has altered Petrovic into a fast, aggressive, intelligent, zombie-like creature with blackened skin and no trace of his original personality. Petrovic then picks up an electric drill and bores a hole in Harrington's abdomen. A zombie Dalby next arrives and starts chasing Kim around the base. 
a severely wounded Harrington manages to drag and lock himself inside the control. He issues a call for Mayday to Brunel before finally passing away. The two zombies then gang up on Kim. While fighting off Petrovic, Kim notices Dalby drinking water from the laboratory floor like an animal. Kim eventually manages to lock herself away from them. Brunel finally arrives at the base and orders Campbell to wait outside while Lane and Irwin secure the other side of the base. After reaching Kim, Brunel is alarmed to see a possessed Dalby and Petrovic frantically attacking the gate. He tells Kim to suit up while he holds them off at the door. Kim swiftly suits up and exits out of the airlock. The now possessed Petrovic strikes Brunel with a pickaxe below his collar bone, but he manages to run outside and eventually lock the zombies inside. The remaining crew outside swiftly carry a fatally injured Brunel into the hydroponic dome. They lay him on a table and clean his wound but are surprised to see a lack of blood coming out from his wound. Brunel then reports suffering memory loss and being thirsty, so Irwin brings a bottle of water and quenches Brunel's thirst when he suddenly starts choking Irwin with his hand. Brunel has been exposed to the organism and is slowly reanimating into a zombie. The scared crew then ties him up on the table. Meanwhile, Dalby and Petrovic blow up a part of the dome and manage to break free, shutting down all communication services. Realizing the importance of contacting the Aurora Lander, Campbell decides to go back to the Tantalus base to fix the communication services using the oxygen feed pipe connecting the Tantalus base and the hydroponic dome. As Brunel is slowly transforming into a zombie, Lane takes Brunel's blood sample and studies the bacteria that turns humans into monsters. Lane and Kim test a range of antibiotics with them against the bacteria to find a possible cure. They decide to use the decontamination spray in the airlock to deliver the solution to the zombie's body. They then test the antibiotic on a tied-up Brunel. After being injected with the antibiotic, the bacteria in Brunel's bloodstream stop multiplying and show zero motility. Back at the base, Campbell fixes the communication services and establishes communication with the Aurora Lander. However, just as he issues a mayday call, the communication breaks down again. Dalby and Petrovic, tired of unsuccessfully attempting to break into the hydroponic dome, start returning back to the base. Kim swiftly opens the airlock to lure the zombies back towards them. Dalby takes the bait and returns to the hydroponic dome, but Petrovic disappears. Lane then learns that the effect of the antibiotic is only temporary, and the bacteria is swiftly developing resistance. Campbell soon finds out that a reanimated Harrington broke down the communication. Harrington chases Campbell into the oxygen feed pipe. Campbell manages to get into the hydroponic dome, but a zombie Harrington tags along, and a struggle follows. Kim then distracts Harrington and tells the other crew to run to the airlock. Irwin falls to the ground and struggles to get up, but Campbell and Lane manage to get to the airlock. Harrington eventually subdues Kim but Irwin wastes on time and traps her with Harrington and closes the airlock behind him. The remaining crew decides to flee to the rover, but Dalby manages to stab Lane's leg inside the airlock with a scissor before she escapes. The survivors, Campbell, Irwin, and Lane, start heading towards the Aurora Lander landing site but soon learn that the rover doesn't have enough power to reach the location. They then decide to get to the other fully charged rover, which is still at the site of the fissure. After reaching the site of the sinkhole, afraid of Lane's possible infection, Irwin steals the second rover under the pretense of a scouting operation. Irwin then gives a warning to Campbell that if he wants to come with him on Rover 2, he must abandon Lane. Meanwhile, Irwin himself conceals evidence of his possible infection. Refusing Irwin's offer, Campbell sticks with Lane on Rover 1. While waiting for the sun to rise and the solar-powered batteries to recharge, Campbell and Lane fall asleep. The next morning, Campbell wakes up alone in the rover and realizes that Lane has fled into the desert, afraid that she might attack him because of her infection. He notices her footsteps on the sand and chases her. Campbell eventually finds her in the desert and pleads with her to come back. Lane fails to deter him from following her, then commits suicide by removing her helmet in desperation. A panicking and sobbing Campbell holds Lane in his arms as she passes away. Bereaved, Campbell mourns his loss when Lane swiftly reanimates and starts attacking him. Blind in love, he tries to hold her and begs her to stop. Resisting the zombie inside her, Lane pleads with Campbell to finish her. Finally, Campbell reluctantly complies by bashing her head in with a rock. Campbell and Irwin then separately converge on the Aurora Lander. As the Aurora Lander touches down, the zombies start racing towards it. Soon the zombies surround the Lander. Campbell tries to warn the unsuspecting crew to not open the bay doors but with no success. By the time he reaches the Lander, all the crew members are slaughtered. As he gets closer to the Lander, he sees a reanimated Kim feeding on a dead crew while Petrovic and the other zombies appear void of moisture and inert. Campbell carefully boards the Lander anticipating attacks. 
He eventually gets to the cockpit and is amazed to find an infected Erwin still wishing to return to Earth. A panting Erwin then tries to remember his daughter's name. He tells Campbell that he wants to feel his hands again. Campbell empathizes with him and helps him remember his daughter's name but then tells him that they can't take the bacteria back to Earth. A stubborn Erwin then attacks Campbell with an infected knife but Campbell manages to stop him and swats the knife from his hand. However, Erwin then slams Campbell into the ground and picks up his knife, and stabs Campbell's helmet, slashing his cheek. Erwin then gets back to the seat and initiates a launch, but Campbell pulls out the knife and again attacks him. They struggle to take each other out as the lander flies vertically towards space. Eventually, Campbell subdues Erwin by continually slamming his helmet on Erwin's head. The lander enters the Mars orbit and their bodies, along with Erwin's virulent tar-esque blood droplets, start floating on the ship. Campbell then drags Erwin's body and his blood-stained helmet into the airlock and opens it, ejecting him and his virulent blood droplets into the vacuum of space. Later, in a message to Mission Control, Campbell says he does not have enough fuel to reach the Aurora, but supplies aboard can last for months if they want to launch a rescue. He then also warns them that this might not be advisable as he could be infected. If so he says that he has just enough fuel for re-entry into the atmosphere and a fast death. Campbell concludes that it will take 15 minutes for the transmission to be received and will await their reply. He subsequently ends the communication, still floating alone in space. Thanks for watching. Make sure to like and comment on the video if you enjoyed it, and subscribe to the channel to see more of these movie summaries.